Hey guys, welcome back to the Zomox channel. Today, we are going to be taking a look at the XGUZ Zogok Unicorn version. Can you believe that this model right here released almost 8 years ago? I am making a review today about a model from 8 years ago. Wow, time machine. I know I'm probably 6 years late, but did any of you bought the premium Bandai Zogok version? Because that thing doesn't work at all. That thing, all it gave you is the color variant and also extra marking sheet. That's it. So do not pick that premium Bandai up. That premium Bandai is the definition of ripoff. But anyway, back to the Zogok itself. The Zogok is always one of my favorite Xeon Remnants design because you know, big heat sword with the hand grenade. Is this like the hand grenade right here? And then you got some throwing daggers. I don't know what did they call it? It's like throwing darts or whatever that calls. But all these kind of weapons right here looks really amazing. And the unique design of the One Year War Xeon type design one of my favorite as well now let's just quickly take a look at the side right here the side right here we got the unicorn version description right here but again i can't read japanese so don't expect me to read it to you and then we got some you know ms information at the side right here turn it to the other side you will see the action the weapon details and you can also see the z zulu as well for some reason i cannot find the z zulu everywhere that i found eBay is so expensive. The Sizu on eBay is selling $60 per one. Ridiculously expensive. I can't find the Sizu though, although the Sizu is one of my favorite design. So let's go to the unboxing part. Now, let's take a look at the instruction menu right here. So first, you can see the standing position of the Zogok Unicorn version, and then you'll see the details of the MS as well, but we can just skip that part. And then open it, you will see the description of the weapons and the Zogok introduction. And then down here, we'll be having the XGUZ line introduction right here. And then for the other side right here, you'll see, you know, it's a pretty simple assemble process to be honest. So let's take a quick look about it. Seems like the throwing dots is fixed and you cannot move. Okay. Now these are the arms, the legs part. And then at the back right here, you will see the action, the rear view, the details, and then again, the details, and then again, the color guide. Starting with the A1 runner right here, the orange color, you know, is for the outside armor of the Zogok. You can see the clear chest part right here, and then you can see some legs part, some arms part right here. That's it. For the D1 runner right here, you can see the throwing darts, you can see the legs part, and then the parts for the chest. For the B1 runner right here, you will see hands option, the heat sword, feet part, and then also this is the backpack. Wait, is this the backpack? And then we got the waist part, arms part. For the E1 runner right here, I think this one is the grenade launcher. We got C1 and C2 parts, but you know, I'll just take C1 as the information part. So C1, you can see the inner frame of the whole Zogok. We got the F runner that contains the clear part for the head part and also the heat sword. So for the heat sword effect parts, they didn't give you orange. You need to repaint it to clear orange. Body caps and lastly, stickers. All right, we went through every single item, so let's go to the review. Hey guys, welcome back to the review of the XGUZ Zogok. So this is the finishing of it. I really want to say that for a model kit that came from 2013, it actually gave me a lot of surprises and it's better than what I expected originally. For the colors, they gave you part separation. I will talk about that during that certain part. They gave you stickers as well, but you know my rules towards stickers. As long as they are sticking on it and not falling off, I'm fine with it. A little story right here, I really want to make a Sogoku review a long time ago, but you know, the price on eBay is quite ridiculous, $50 to $60 for this guy right here. And finally, through Facebook Market, I was able to get it for $30. Thank God, I can finally make a review about this amazing kit right here. I actually like this kit because of A, the unique design, and B, the performance in the anime because it's very cool to see Zogog knee down and then, you know, throw out the boomerang cutter and then or getting a heat sword and stab it through the gym too. Those two performances right there, actually very memorable to myself. In my opinion, Zogog is one of the best old Zeon design right here. 
So I'm actually very happy to get this model right here. So let's start the review. Now let's talk about the stickers first. So first you will see the white piece right here on the arms. These are the stickers. When you pull down the part right here, you will see the gray part inside the arm. This part right here will be the sticker. Turn it to the back right here, the white piece on the rocket launcher will be stickers as well. But they all don't fall off anyway, so I'm okay with it. Due to the fact that the Zogok design is different than other mobile suits, so I have to do this review differently. Normally, I would have like head, chest, waist, and then you know, the arms, whatever the order is. But this time, I'm starting with the whole upper body instead of going individual parts. So starting with the upper body. So on the top right here, you will see 10 boomerang cutters. They are all individual parts, but sadly, you cannot move it and you cannot, you know, recreate the scene where it throws out or it launches out because there's absolutely no articulation right here. So this part right here is a little bit disappointing in my opinion, but all you can do is to make your Zogok knee down and then imagine it inside your head. At the middle of the upper body, you will see the mono eye right here. But when I was explaining the boomerang cutter, this piece right here already fall off because this clear piece right here don't have a lock, don't have a joint, is really unreliable for the design there. So this clear piece right here will always fall off. You can do something like glue it or you can just leave it or you can just put it there to display and never touch it again because this clear piece right here is extremely fragile with a little bit of touching it will fall off so this part right here i think this design is quite bad but let's take a look at the good part right here so when you take a look at the mono eye you will see some details around it actually there are more details under the armor when you're assembling the zogok upper body part you will see more details inside the armor piece right here so really recommend you to check it out but for the mono eye as soon as you took out the uh, clear piece right here you can adjust the mono eye because it's just a ball joint so you can adjust it to whatever position that you want it's quite convenient though but the clear piece i have a problem about it also when you take a look at the chest right here the orange the light gray and the gray color they are going along very well all of them is part separation, no stickers been used. So this part right here, I think Bandai deserve a comment. Turning to the back right here, you will see some thrusters and the actual backpack. Now, the backpack right here, only part that you need to repaint is inside the thruster supposed to be yellow, but I repaint the whole thing to silver to delude myself that, yeah, I did a little bit of repainting. At the back of the waist right here, you will see two strand folds. I think that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, it's a rocket launcher, you get what I mean. So you can just take it out and use it individually as well if you would like, just like this. Now, there's a bad news about this model kit right here because the tube right here, you can see the tube, is connecting between the backpack and the waist part, which means it limited the upper body movement. The upper body basically have no movement because the pipe right here is hard plastic, not soft plastic. So you got no articulation for the upper body part and you just have to deal with it. Up to the arms part. The arms part on the model kit performance, I'm not a fan of it because the model kit design really have a problem about the arms. So let's just check out the articulation first. So first, 360 is, you know, achievable, but it is quite hard to turn. So I'm not a fan of it. Again, lift up 90 degrees, but because the connection at the middle of the arm is a ball joint. So very often times when you're lifting up the arms and it will just pop out. So this part right here is quite annoying and frustrating as well when you're posing with the arms. We got a little bit of bending about the arms right here. So it's around not even 30 degrees. <laughs> it's quite poor for the arms articulation. If you want to recreate the scene where the Zogok actually punches the enemy because the arms can extend in the settings, all you have to do is to remove the orange piece right here under the orange piece, you will see a gray sticker. I suggest you try not to pull out too often because you know, it's a sticker and you can see that mine is starting to get a little bit damaging. It's start getting a little white. But if you want to extend the arms, you can just put in the new piece right here and then put the hand back into it. And this will be how you extend the arm and try to make it look like the Zogok is punching someone. Let's take a look at the legs articulation. So first, kicking to the front, 90 degrees, actually a little bit more than 90 degrees. Kicking to the side, exactly 90 degrees. Kicking to the back, close to 90 degrees. And then, you know, for the whole leg, we can turn around very freely. And then for the bending part, sorry, not even 45 degrees because of the design problem. And then for the feet down here, 
a little bit of movement because it's a ball joint. So for the legs articulation though, personally, I think the performance is actually very great. There's an extra information that I want to share with you guys. When you take a look at the legs right here, you can see the colors, the pot separation going along very well. I just want to say that they are both XG, but the Ifrit cannot do it and the Sogok is able to do it so. Because for the Ifrit, there's a part like down at the legs right here is white. I think I trash talk both Ifrit that I reviewed that why can't they just, you know, do another separate piece and then let us just put it on like the Sogok. And instead, the Ifrit use a long sticker just wrap around and it looks very bad for the finishing. But for the Sogok right here, I gotta say that the legs color actually looking very nice. So it's kind of funny, they're both XG, but they can do it for Sogok, they can't do it for Ifrit. Now let's go through the extra accessories part. So first we got a pair of weapon holding hands. Coming up next is one of the main weapon of the Sogok, the heat sword right here. We got the standard form, which is non-heated. And then we got the clear piece right here that represent heated. I repaint the blade to all range. The model kit itself gave you completely clear piece, so you have to do a little bit of recoloring. They could have designed the heat sword a little bit better because right now, you don't switch the blade only, you have to switch the bottom part right here as well. So this bottom part right here is going to be a bit annoying to repaint. If Bandai can redesign the whole thing instead of, you know, just putting it on like this, uh, they can do the handle separately and then the blade separately. So if you want to repaint the blade to silver or you need to repaint it to a heater sort like this, it will be easier for us to, you know, just pluck it out and then put it in. But you know, that's how the design is right now. So the repainting part is going to be a little bit annoying because you have to do a little bit of taping. For the blade right here is heater, so it's orange. And then for the bottom part right here, you need some gray parts. But sorry, I don't have the gray color in my house. So I can't do the repainting. Thank you guys for watching this video. This will be the end of the review. Let me quickly do like a conclusion about this Sogok right here. For a model kit came from 2013, the performance is quite nice, except for the arms. The arms are bad, always falling out. The ball joint design right there, wish they can change it to something else. And for the clear piece in front of the mono eye, always falling out, it's a nightmare. I don't really like it. But other than these two problems right here, I think everything on this Sogoku right here is acceptable. It's quite nice. And it's also a quick to build kit as well. So it's very good for beginners and minimum repainting required so very good kit for lazy people for myself or people who would like to learn how to paint individual parts so i think the sogok will be one of the best choice for beginners or someone who is lazy like myself or for people who would like to try to repaint the kit the sogok is going to be a very good choice thank you guys for watching this video if you like this video make sure you subscribe hit the bell next to the subscribe button so you get notified whenever i upload a new video donation links is in the description and i'll see you in the next review goodbye